Okay. So hi everyone. Uh, thanks for all who joining today as well as folks who will uh, you know, watch this uh, recording session later on in YouTube. Uh, welcome to Multimodal Weekly. This is a webinar series hosted by the team at uh, 12 Labs. And we've been you know, doing this every Friday for the last uh, 40, 40, 40 weeks. This is actually webinar session 41. So it's really awesome to continue meeting on a regular basis. Here's some of the topics that we tend to cover uh, each Friday. Uh, news research in multimodal AI and foundation models, uh, innovative multimodal application in different verticals. Uh, since we focus a bit more on video understanding, sometimes we have community members to talk about uh, the specific you know, projects they work on at the decision of like video and, and multimodal. And finally, sometimes we'll have team members who give tutorials and guides on using our platforms and API. Uh, in some of the recent sessions, we have both um, you know, uh, external speakers working in you know, video editing and you know, computer vision to you know, internal speaker uh, sharing some of the latest research work that our team has been doing. So for today, uh, we have uh, you know, two speakers, both coming from uh, an academic research background, um, and they will cover uh, some of their work at the intersection of like, you know, uh, image and you know, vision language model. Um, the first speaker is Marsar, uh, who currently a uh, research scientist at 12 Labs, and he will uh, dive into one of his work uh, during his master's thesis called Mosaic Image Augmentation for Referring Image Segmentation. And you know the second speaker is Bushai, currently a PhD candidate at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. He will give a talk called Compositional Visual Linguistic Models via Visual Makers and Counterfactual Examples. And actually, matter of fact, I uh, I um, brought in uh, one of my uh, collaborators, Harshan, last year to this webinar, and that was one of the, definitely one of the most uh, engaging sessions that we have. So excited to see more. Uh, and see how some of the work that you guys have been doing over the last year. Uh, with that, uh, this is a quick uh, just note on uh, the uh, webinar. So for the attendees, feel free to send your question on the chat and I can surface them to the speakers as they uh, finish. And then after each speaker finish, we also have a Q&A, um, you know, a short Q&A for each of them. So I will stop sharing my screen and I let uh, Mars do wanna go ahead and get started. Awesome. Okay, um, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, um, uh, let me start. Um, hi guys, I'm Mars Ha, I'm a research scientist at 12 Labs. Today I'll be presenting one of the works I did uh, during my graduate school for the master's thesis, uh, which is more like image augmentation for referring image augmentation. So this is the list of contents for my today's presentation. Okay, so uh, what is referring image segmentation task? Uh, referring image segmentation, uh, segmentation or so-called RIS task generates a segmentation mask of the object when you're given an image and a freeform query uh, referring to that certain target object, uh, which is usually called referring expression. Uh, for example, like in the image in the slide, if the image is given where multiple people exist in the zoo, the model is, uh, needs to locate and segment the main ingredients where uh, among these many people by understanding the given referring expression. Um, so RS task has a great research interest and value as it studies uh, machine perception and machines interaction with human beings through natural language, which has many possible applications like uh, image editing, robotics, or automated driving. So that was what uh, referring is segmentation is about. So here I will share uh, what are the key factors for success in RIS task and some insights in the benchmarks that motivate the proposed method I will introduce in the later slides. So, um, Imagine the case where you try to find the object that someone else points at with words. So we can um, naturally expect multiple possible descriptions uh, depending on the situation. So 
And in my study, I make an assumption that the factors to affect these referring scenarios or uh, situations can be roughly summarized as uh, twofold. So that is the level of visual ambiguity and linguistic understanding. Visual ambiguity here is simply uh, the number of objects of the same category or something that uh, looks similar, while the level of linguistic understanding means what indicators uh, should be used to differentiate uh, objects to point at the right target, especially when we exclude the direct use of positional words. As more visually similar objects exist um, in the image, as in the case of left figure, it is likely that you really have to indicate the subtle difference between objects or use the relationship between different objects around the referent. Uh, so to reflect this human behavior of referring to something and evaluate it, and promote the machine's multimodal understanding capability uh, in RS task. Benchmarks like uh, RefCoco, RefCoco Plus, and GREF actually are annotated in the way that images have to contain at least a certain number of objects of the same category, um, as in the table showing data set statistics. Um, however, in the preliminary experiment and analysis, I found that these numbers are not sufficient to guarantee the quality of data uh, to train the model to really understand the subtle uh, visual difference and factor cues, which I believe are the key factors in RI's task. So although other like more advanced benchmarks like phrase code have been introduced recently, uh, many RI's papers have used uh, RefCoco, RefCoco Plus, uh, and GREF uh, for training and evaluating the models. So RevCoco and RevCoco Plus are not to be easier data sets as in the left figure with just three to four words um, are given in a query. And the difference between them is RevCoco Plus prohibits the positional cures as in the, the woman compared to the right woman. On the other hand, um, GREF or sometimes called uh, RevCoco G uh, is considered the hardest one among the three as it contains uh, longer sentences as seen in the middle figure, uh, expecting that the samples are challenging uh, enough to give a model a capability to discern the right target from similar objects uh, by capturing hints in the sentence. However, I found many uh, samples with more words uh, do not always mean harder and challenging cases uh, because we need to consider the visual ambiguity given the query. So in the right figure, although the sample uh, seems difficult with three people holding wine glasses uh, at, the, at the same place, it becomes actually easy because there is only one woman in the scene and the given word woman is enough to find her without understanding the rest of the sentence. Um, this is contrary to the middle uh, image where multiple women appear in the same place, uh, also with one man in the behind. And the model needs to know what hair brushed means. So from this observation of data samples, I raised a uh, question if current uh, state-of-the-art models in RS task can actually perform well um, in hard scenarios. So we manually uh, picked 100 easy and hard samples each by considering if the whole sentence understanding is re required. And so Many state-of-the-art models in RIS task indeed have performance gaps as in the table. Okay, so um, I wondered if there is a way to increase the visual ambiguity given the query to create samples of good quality or challenging to make a stronger model for uh, RIS. So this is where I proposed um, negative image mosaic augmentation uh, inspired from the mosaic augmentation first proposed in YOLO uh, V4. So the method is super simple. Um, negative mosaic augmentation method just augments each image by combining it with three other, three other images to create a mosaic, uh, which is exactly the same as the pre previous method in YOLO. But the difference is that uh, the images to be attached are not randomly picked, but retrieved from the image pool based on their uh, similarities to the original image. So as a result, 
you can build an image like um, in this figure where each mosaic cell works as a negative image. Uh, for example, let's say the query is a man about to throw a frisbee. Uh, in the left image, understanding a frisbee is enough to find a, uh, the target. But in the right, the model now needs to understand what throw a frisbee means, as each image contains uh, frisbees and men trying to catch or throw something. So we expect the augmentation method to help uh, model focus on the like subtle differences between similar entities in the image and also concretely understand the texture cues in the referring expression. So now, um, in order to retrieve visually similar images to create such negative mosaics, we use image text ritual, uh, ritual models like CLIP uh, to help model learn better. Uh, what we need here is the right level of feature ambiguity, which means the augmented image uh, should be neither too easy nor too hard. So however, if we take any reachable results, um, the mosaic might end up being too easy, uh, as in the left case, or invalid. Uh, with uh, multiple men jumping with a skateboard in so one game is creating uh, multiple possible answers but not annotated as GT mask. So the proposed method first source images in the pool based on the similarity scores and use only top K images so that visually similar images can be uh, re retrieved in the first place. Uh, on top of this, because we don't want multiple answers to exist at the same time, Images with similar scores um, higher than a certain threshold tau are dropped, uh, assuming those images have almost same semantics. Uh, although these filterings um, honestly are not perfect um, to prevent cases in the in the figures, uh, but still experiments results show effectiveness of using negative images as mosaic cells. And the hyperparameters for filtering are adjusted empirically for each data set as it has different difficulty levels depending on how simple uh, images and cores are in its data set. And during trading, augmentation is applied stochastically based on the probability hyperparameter uh, we set because inference is uh, done in one image and we hope the improved capabilities through mosaic images are transferred uh, to the one image inference as well. So next is the uh, experiment results. So these are the benchmarks and metrics. Uh, I'll skip this as I already mentioned these. So here is the main performance table. After augmentation with negative mosaics, we achieved uh, improvements in performance consistently over different models, um, different data sets, and also in the table uh, for uh, also on the different lengths of the referring expressions, showing the effectiveness of the method. And we also compared uh, the proposed method with other uh, methods that are popularly used, including original mosaic augmentation method proposed in YOLO, uh, comics and mixed gen. Our method um, achieved the best performance, although we expect this to be somewhat natural as the referring segmentation requires the semantic of the original problem before augmentation to be kept intact, where um, like other methods basically destroy the, the meaning of the original problem, as you can see in the picture, somehow by shrinking or covering the visual entities uh, that become the hints to find the reference. Uh, and on the relations to this different set of hyperparameters were attempted, uh, and we found the like the trend where proper thresholds are necessary uh, for filtering. Tau parameter is used to drop the two similar images, while k determines uh, the size of the top k similar image pool. Uh, if k is equal to the data set size, it becomes like a random mosaic augmentation but we already saw a peak in performance with a proper tau and k uh, chosen. We, and we also tried blurring the other three cells to see if the performance games came solely from the like multi-scale effects as obviously the model can now see small objects in the uh, three different scales of mosaics. 
But um, Plumplus actually degraded uh, showing negative images actually helped. Yeah. And move on to the qualitative analysis. Interestingly, uh, let me look into the last activation map uh, of the model trained with augmentation. The clear boundaries were observed and correct reference were located that uh, the model were not able to discern before. Um, I believe this is the combination of different ex effects like exposure to small and similar objects and also like more images for each query as mosaics will be considered as different images for the model. Yeah, and here's another quality results um, showing the model can discern really um, similar objects by capturing important uh, linguistic cues in the referring expression. And for um, limitation and future work, uh, I think there are like uh, some related questions on here. Uh, I think the filtering is not clear perfect and you know can prevent like every possible false positive or first negative cases. Like will multiple answers exist or not, none of the objects can be an answer like because the query uh, is somehow on the like positional words and there might be like uh, multiple cases where it can be like uh, corresponding to uh, the query like the rightmost pizza um, and plus the expressions are not augmented uh, we uh, the augmentation just works on only on the visual parts so the quality of mosaics are like upper bounded by the quality of referee expressions in the given data set uh, and for future work, I think um, diffusion-based negative object augmentation like, can be tried uh, with optical level parsing to create more fine-grained and correct uh, uh, cases without uh, those like false cases to create, uh, yeah. And so that's uh, what the end of the presentation. And thank you for listening. Uh, feel free to ask questions if you have any. Yeah, actually, move ask two questions on the chat. You want to just answer them? Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, there's a question from Mukai. Uh, what is your reference? Ref yeah, it's Ref Kokoji. I guess there's two splits uh, for the Ref Kokoji, but like some papers use three ref and some, some other papers refer to it as uh, Ref Kokoji. Yeah, those are the same things. Yeah. And and the another question is, what if your retreat images have false negatives? Okay. Yeah, and this is a quite good question. So we were trying like different ways um, to handle like such cases. Uh, for example, if the uh, original problem have the query uh, like a right apple, and then you retrieve similar images using the text right apple, then you might end up having multiple images of apples that are in the right position. And if you sum them up into like mosaic, there are multiple apples in the right place and then and then the original meaning of the problem is just gone. Um, but so we kind of actually did um, some experiments to prevent such cases where uh, removing all the images with queries uh, having positional cures because we believe those cases happen uh, mostly in uh, the case where the query is positional. And the performance difference was not that uh, huge. So we uh, kind of like It was okay to like, um, I think the ratio of uh, creating such false negative cases are not a huge problem. Yeah, at least for these uh, benchmarks used in RIS test. Yeah. Um, and there's another question, College size and input. Well, the input size um, depends on the each model, uh, but 
we use the same resolution of the original input and the mosaic image um, has the same input size. Yeah. But each cell is just half, yeah, like the quarter of the original image. Four images together, the results will be come to X. No, uh, we put like four smaller images into one limit, um, into one mosaic to have the same resolution as the original input resolution. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, if you have any more questions, just put on the chat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We actually try like different shapes of mosaics, like two by two or three by three, but somehow I got the best results in the two by two formation. Yeah. yeah. Only I've got some text expression. Yeah. Um, the question is about whether I tried augmentation also in the text expression. Mm, I didn't take that into consideration for this work, but uh, as I mentioned in the future work, that's uh, a great future uh, work. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's could be super cool to have like multiple, um, yeah, the diverse input, right? Like just text expression, audio expression, video expression, obviously be very relevant to what we are doing. So um, maybe just a high level, like broad, broad question is like, you know, if you have to if you have to redo this work, like today, given some of the progress with multimodal AI in the past year, what, what could be your approach? Oh, uh, um, well, as we have like these days, like super huge uh, visual language models, um, and because I like applied uh, this augmentation method only for the RIS task, it might be like um, uh, like worth trying uh, with other like visual language text tasks. So for the like uh, general purpose vision foundation model, yeah, because well with this method the model can see like multiple um, but similar objects at the at the in in the one image, yeah. and then differentiates and disaggregates all those things um, aligned with the texture cues given in the query. Perfect. I I think that's that's a very nice answer and. Actually, also like probably transition pretty well to you know to, to the second speaker as well, um, because I think he did a lot of work in vision language model. Um, yeah, those, thanks, Mars. Thanks for the audience for asking a really good question as well. Um, and excited to you know see how um, that data augmentation can can be improved given some of the advance in multimodal AI. Uh, with that, uh, Mars, do you do, do my stop sharing the screen so Mu can thank um, you. Yeah. thank you. Uh, hi, James. Uh, how long should I present? I should present to to like waste time until uh, yeah. probably I say around four thirty or twenty five or thirty or thirty. Okay, yeah, sounds great. Yeah, let me share my screen. Yeah. Um. Hi, everyone. Uh, I think everyone can see my PowerPoint screen, right? Yep, I see it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sounds great. So, uh, my name is uh Mu Cai, and I'm a uh, a uh, fourth year PhD student from University of Wisconsin, Mads. my advisor, uh, my advisor is Professor Yung Jili. So my uh, re my recent research interests are centered around uh, visual language models, especially compositional visual language models. So today my topic is compositional visual language models where visual markers and counterfactual examples. So uh, I will introduce the techniques of visual markers and counterfactual examples la later, but let's focus on Compositional. This, this word compositional first. So, what is uh, compositional? What does this word mean? So, compositional is, is is very simple. It just means we have two sources. We have source A and we have source B. We want to think about some ways to compose them together and either try to evaluate 
the performance on, under this case or try to improve the performance in this case. And I, I, I have several works uh, along this uh, stream. Firstly, I compose images and, uh, and video prompt for large multimodal models, specifically region understanding. And, and secondly, I, I use such compositional technique to improve uh, reasoning. Specifically, I use counterfactual images and captions to improve the reading capability. Thirdly, I also uh, use natural languages and SVG to um, explore the text-only models capability for understanding visual concepts. So I, I will talk about uh, this project uh, one by one. The first one is, is that uh, currently nearly everybody in the world are using ChatGPT, and uh, we know that such large multimodal models do a decent job in whole image understanding. What does this mean? Like for uh, closed source models like GPT-4V or uh, open source models like Lava from our lab or uh, mini gpt 4 they can do a decent job in understanding images and questions from user side and generate uh, some text. But what about region on understanding? What if like, oh, I give such a complex image, how do I understand each person or each region? Uh, there, are, there are already some works try to, ta to tackle this. They either use textual representation or cronies, right? You embed those cronies into the text and try to find a large language model to uh, learn such coordinate representation. Or you can use a uh, region of interest, like you crop some feature from the uh, regional clip feature map. And otherwise, you can learn a dictionary or vocabulary for such locations where uh, you can use such a, a discrete token similar to positional embedding in uh, VIT and try to embed such coordinates into one of the grid in such discrete tokens. Though they can do some simple tasks like understanding a rectangle, or a, that's also known by bounding box. But the bigger issue is that they can't understand diverse video references such as scribbles or arrows. And actually, in uh, daily life, like in Google search or 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 even in, in your iPhone or Samsung phones, you use some 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 human drawn video prompts to uh, refer to a region. Then the question is. Uh, how how can we uh, achieve such functionality of understanding random uh, visual prompts, diverse visual prompts? And through our study, we found out that we don't need to use a very complex techniques. The, thing, the solution is super simple than your imagination. So why, why it's simple? Uh, our technique is uh, summarized with, with one sentence. We simply overlay the visual prompts into the uh, original image. So specifically, if the original image is a, a three-channel RGB e image and the video prompt is uh, like a four-channel video prompt image with uh, like a foreground and a background set separate channel, then we can just do alpha blending o o over it and form a new image. So, so this technique can bring unprecedented applications at new first time. Why? Because at new first time, users can just use um, so like computer pens or editors to edit the image and refer to arbitrary regions. So as a result, with such simple overlaying te technique, what can we achieve as uh, like diverse functionalities? So uh, we can let you users to use some pens to annotate the image and then use their keyboard to ask the question with respect to an image. And then the, the, our, our model can be trained to follow such instruction following for, format to answer questions specifically to uh, to a region. So what's the the the, the mirrors here? There are several mi mirrors. The, the, the first one is that we can represent any visual prompts. Why? Because the we uh, the visual prompts are annotated as pixel level, meaning that the, the users can mark every pixel as their visual markers. This is more general, uh, more more generalized ball than uh, the bounding box or the simple segmentation mask. And then um, we don't have the sophisticated region specific design, and it's similar than any press strategy. And certainly, uh, we offer a user friendly way to integrate uh, video reference in, into the language dialogue. What does this mean? This means that we can use specific terms like red arrow 
to refer to oh this is uh, the red uh, arrow means that i uh, i am using this, this marker so and ne uh, next time you can use other languages like blue rectangle or the purple mask whatever you want so yeah um people may be uh, interested in that how do i train my model so I, I, as I said, the center of my work is that I overlay the video prompts onto the image. So this is the image part. And for the, te for the text part, we use additional re region level prompting data. So such, uh, and, and with such image and, and text data, we can train our, our model, which I will specifically tell which data set we leverage in the next slide. But, uh, from a methodology overview, we also use multi-layer clip encoder uh, features to uh, further enhance the region understanding capability. Why? Because such visual markers are actually quite low-level low visual features, and it's common sense that the low-level visual features are richly contained in the, like, in the shallow uh, layers in deep neural networks. So we use a multi-layer filter, yeah, similar to AppSyn, to further enhance the performance. Um, you may ask, what kind of video prompt do we support, right? Because during training, you, uh, we can't ask the annotators to draw such video prompt for each image. That, that will be too expensive. How do we do? We use synthetic video prompts to achieve this functionality. And as you can see, we have uh, eight kinds of video prompts to, uh, as an example, where we have mass counter, Ellipse, bounding box, triangle, scribble, point, arrow, and mask. And I, I think it, it, it broadly covers the commonly used real prompts, but you can also try different things, uh, like what if I have some digits or text? I, I incorporate such format during training, what will happen? It, 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 this, this will be an interesting study. And with such uh, synthetic video prompts, we can then curate our training data, like uh, we can use Refco G as a previous presenter. Ma 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 he is using some he's using this data set for segmentation, but I use it reversely. I I the case for my usage is that I'm giving the image and the bounding box or, or mask, and my model needs to predict the caption. So uh, th this is the first task uh, which is region captioning, and I also have a, a second task which is uh, the, like multi-region understanding or classification. Or oh, and I have region count. Uh, counting like how many objects here in the same category as uh, this one in red bounding box, which is a parrot. Uh, and finally, I have advanced uh, very reasoning task where the model need to understand the relationship between multiple referred objects and uh, make a, a decision or make a description about their activity. And how well does our model perform? We found that our simple technique could achieve state of the art per performance compared to previous work like uh, GPT-4, ROI, Shikra, or Cosmos 2. So those methods, so how, how do those methods do like, uh, those methods just use my prior uh, techniques I, I, I mentioned in related work, either it's textual representation or ROI or it's uh, discrete tokens. Yeah, so empirically, uh, our simple technique re receives the, the state of the art performance. And let's also see some interesting uh, qualitative e examples. So uh, all the e examples here are drawn by user as inference time, meaning that our approach can generate well to real user. Here, user just randomly draw three circles with different co colors, and we ask model to determine oh, which two circles share the same content. And our model can successfully see that of oh, the two regions uh, with the same content are the red and blue circles. And, and, and the model can even explain that they both uh, can contain a train. Yeah, I think this model, uh, the train model has at least some low level in intelligence here. And uh, here is another example where we specifically study the uh, Arrow understanding capability. Why this task is interesting? Because as, as you can see uh, in this uh, in the two images, the body of the two red arrows are the same, but the head of the arrow points to different all, all, all objects. And, and our model can understand that oh, those two uh, arrows points to different all objects, yeah, which uh, tell us that our model can understand the arrow direction pretty well. And here is a more in, more interesting example, like uh, 
what if we have the composition of very prompt? Like we have red arrow, we have a uh, green arrow, we have red text, we have green text, and we have a uh, yellow circle. Like this is a really complex situation. And this is very challenging. And actually this image is copied from the original GP4V uh, technical review from Microsoft. And I, I directly do a screenshot and fit this screenshot in my system and the, the model can do a decent job in first uh, to, a, to, a, to perception on uh, which visual marker correspond to which and then do a specific re re reasoning like what's like the question can be what's in the circle image um, yeah or what what's in the circle image and like the uh, stuff within the circle should belong to object one or two and our model can successfully um, respond that the stuff within the circle is liquid from from object one which is water yeah, and in addition to uh, uh, academic benchmark, we also propose a new free form v weekly benchmark. Why 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 we need this, this, this benchmark? Because the traditional benchmark are just like this, which is I would say pretty boring and less uh, challenging. Uh, and we 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 should uh, right the since GPT four we came out, we should have some benchmark that really evaluates the, the true intelligence of such large uh, models. Uh, to solve this problem, we propose a high quality video prompting benchmark with around 300 qu uh, questions covering three, uh, six aspects, including OCR recognition, mass, and uh, a lot. And we do a rigorous annotation, and all the labels are um, annotated and examined by seven rounds. Uh, and what are the, uh, the the examples of the data set? Like the question can be, what's the value of the variable in the equation within the blue ellipse, right? In order to let the model answer this question, the model first needs to localize, oh, what's the equation within this blue ellipse? And then the model need to uh, do a math uh, question by solving this uh, like elementary school uh, math question and give us answer. And then there are more more like advanced uh, questions. Like there, there are three arrows and we ask some questions with, re with respect to the social relationship between those three person and ask the model to give a rationale. So in this case, the model needs to associate each person with a specific kind of view prompts, reason about their relationship. And finally, use natural languages to represent, to, to formulize uh, their their response, which is a pretty hard data set. And we uh, use GPT-4 as a judge and do benchmarking over our newly curated data set. And uh, we found that uh, our model is only inferior uh, compared to GPT-4V, which is a strong upper bound baseline for us. But for previous previous model like Sequoia GPT-4 ROI or Cosmos, they, so pretty weak performance, even weaker than the image level models like Lava, Qven, or like like, like in, Instruct Bleep. And we suspect that such specific design of you know, uh, our, our regions like the textual representation or the or the discrete uh, tokens may uh, may make the model overfit to the region level train that uh, data and our work with to, to do not rely on uh, specially designed video prompts encoder can actually maintain the performance uh, compared to the e image level understand. Yeah, so finally, uh, one question is why, well, let's rethink why why such simple video prompt can work, right? Because like uh, the overlay image can just be separated with the original image and video prompts. And uh, we found out that actually uh, in clip training, there is a small amount of data with video prompt. Here, here is a finding from ICCV 2023 paper where they find out that in YFCC 15 million, they, they can find some image uh, caption pairs with uh, such uh, uh, annotation like circles. Uh, and uh, I think one follow up work could be what if we, like if, based on my work, what, what we, if we, we continue Scale the training data on my approach. What will happen? Can 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 the fine tuned model even surpass the GPT four V on such reason understanding task? And uh, my my works 
although it's just accepted by CPI, it, it's already influencing uh, kind of works. For example, here is a, a, a work from Google DeepMind where they use their prompt to do the to do the robot planning task. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah, I do a detailed description about video prompting, and then I will use several minutes to introduce uh, two of the following works along uh, the line of compositional video language task. And the, 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 the second paper I introduced is actually very similar to uh, the previous pre, uh, presenter's uh, work. So uh, the previous presenter, he focuses on the segmentation under the very like challenging uh, captioning or or re, or referral task. Here, I I focus on the uh, image on, on understanding. So, uh, uh, the problem is very simple. Like, uh, given the uh bottom right in image, the model either is clip or GPT four. We need to pick up the correct caption. Like, a pink scoop is on the top, and a blue scoop is on bottom, or a pink scoop on bottom and a blue group on top. As a human, we know the, the answer without further consideration, right? The pink one is always on top. But GPT-4, we can make silly mistakes about this. Like, uh, uh, for, uh, yeah, the example is so, so below. GPT-4, we can make some re reasoning and then tell us, therefore, the caption one is correct, where caption one is definitely wrong. So. A similar thing ha happens about the positional understanding and attribute understanding. So in, in the above case, uh, the model needs to determine the relative position of the white dress and uh, uh, the, 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 uh, yeah, the white dress, dress and the um, uh, red dress. Yeah. But the GP4 still make mistake about this. Um, so, but previous studies do not do a rigorous uh, uh, qualitative analysis on this. What I mean by qualitative is that we need to get a, a, a accuracy about the kind of models on understanding basic capabilities, like it's uh, uh, like positional understanding or counting. So here we uh, use a bounding box and notation to con construct a positional understanding benchmark where we specifically understand the below average understanding and the left to right understanding capability of the models. And here, here are the results of CLIP and the LA 1.5, which is the state of the, which represents that, that the state of the art, the contrastive and, uh, gener and generative video language models. Um, and what's our observation here? Our observation is that, that both models uh, show like near random chance performance, especially for clip. The lava is a bit better. And uh, and we also found out that it positioning is not the only problem that such uh, clip and lava mo models are is bad at. We actually do more interesting studies like what if we do things like counting? Like it's a uh, original annotation is, is three cars and four person. We deducted it into two cars and three person. Uh, three person can flip and lava distinguish which option is correct. The answer is no. Like uh, random chance performance is fifty. Clip is a little better. La lava is, is a, a a bit worse, but they are far from. Uh, I would say a, de a, a decent accuracy. How can we fix this? Uh, essentially, in order to fix this, the model needs to learn to, di to distinguish uh, different concepts. So the, pre the previous presenter, he uh, used to uh, combine four images into a big grid and try to, set, to, uh, try to segment through the hard negatives. What I did is that I also use hard negatives. I use counterfactual reasoning. So uh, this term may be astonishing, but it's very simple. We just need positive examples and negative examples, and uh, they they should both be images and captions. And that's it. After we have the data, we can find you the model without updating the code at all. So for for example, for left to right, uh, problem. We just uh, like for uh, we'll give give it the original uh, image and caption. We just flip the keyword, like re replace left to right, and then we can do a horizontal flip to the original e image. And and in this way, we will get a negative caption and negative image. 
it's similar thing happens in up and down. But for above and below the case, like the up and down case, uh, we can really vertically flip the image, right? Be it because it's not reasonable. We have to find out a way to curate the reasonable uh, below and uh, uh, above flipped images. So here we use Glazer, which is also from our lab. Uh, and this is a grounded image generation model to uh, generate the image based on locations. And uh, in, in this way, we can curate the negative data. Yes, yeah, it's similar thing happens in counting. When, when we want to create the negative caption, we just uh, like, we, we just do the imprinting uh, to to certain objects and uh, empirically we found that such data work, works and uh, finally we also have the challenging case of uh, semantic compositional reasoning. What is semantic compositional reasoning? The model needs to distinguish the positive caption, for example, a man with blue hat and orange vest with a negative caption like uh, we replace man with a woman, or we replace blue with red, or we just flip the to a a, 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 a detective such as orange and blue. Uh, in order to generate such case, we first use, use GPT four V to produce the, the high quality negative captions, and then we use the state of the art, the art image generation model DALI three to generate the corresponding negative I I images. So. Now we have data, which means that we both have positive and negative image versus text da data. Then we can fine tune. We don't update the code. We just use a vanilla fine tune code, but we use both a positive and negative images and captions as, as you see here. We, for clean, we still use construction loss and for Lava, we still use a net token generation loss. We just curate the data and let's see the power of data. With our fine tuning data, like we we not improve the model a bit, but we improve the model a lot on uh, a lot of benchmarks. Here is the positional understanding for left, right, uh, about, below, and uh, the second table shows the the accuracy for counting where we also improve a lot. Here we show the a, a examples for semantic composition re re reasoning where we improve around 5% for base models. And uh, our fine tune Lama model can even beat GPT-4V in composition reasoning. So th th this also corresponds to what I think. If we have enough high quality data for a specific task, we can actually beat the open AI models on this, on this specific task. Uh, here are some qualitative uh, examples where the uh, I, the entry with the red, red background denotes a wrong prediction. And we found that for those cha challenging cases, our model can uh, make the predictions correctly, such, such as white shirt, black shorts, or black shorts, white shirts. Yeah. And the final question is uh, why the data is so effective? Uh, we believe that there is a lack of such compositional data during clip and lava training. It's similar to some, uh, yeah, I, I use some Gaussian representation to mimic this process. Yeah, maybe let's say uh, the model uh, learns what, what is white shirt and the model knows what is black pants. But some point in the middle, like oh, when it's the composition of white shirts and black pants, the model didn't know. And what we did is that we use more data to let the model un un understand such shallow regions better. Yeah, and uh, those are my two, pre two previous work and I will use uh, two minutes to introduce uh, my remaining works. The, the first one is uh, like, um, what uh, for, in order to build a, a, a vision language chatbot, can we de discard the images? What I did, what I mean by discard is that we don't use clip uh, in, in encoder and we don't use such connector. We directly transform the pixels into the languages. And, and someone may say, oh, I can use the, the pixel va values into the language prompt. And the, this will be very long and there is no semantic here. So uh, we actually need, need a way to simplify the images here, uh, draw from the inspiration 
a famous artist Picasso, we we try to use the sketches to represent the object. For for example, with several sketches, like the final image, we, we human can still recognize, oh, it, it's an ox, but the, the machine cannot. So we use a similar representation where we represent uh, the images with uh, sketches. Specifically, it's called scalable vector graphics uh, SVG, and we transform images into that SVG for format and put it into the language prompt. And uh, we found that uh, in this way, we can do the image understanding and generation at the same time. Uh, for example, here is the, uh, one of, of our prompting example. We are giving the uh, question, giving the prompt, and the SVG code, the model can do some tasks like uh, recognizing and do colorizing, do colorization and the instruction following. So we do some simple experiments like we re we reasoning where SVG achieve better than pixel representation such as CNN, relation net networks and even G uh, and even GPT four, and uh, we also do some uh, tasks like visual prompting to generate the image where SVG with GPT four achieves the best performance. We also do some uh, robustness per performance where since. SVG has a good color shape separation capability. It achieves a much better performance compared to PNG. And we also do many uh, interesting experiments. Yeah. Um, so due, due to the time constraint, I won't dig, uh, uh, dig deep, uh, but SVG actually has some, uh, some benefits and I think people should explore along this, this direction to find more uh, advantage and possibly uh, like some replacement of such uh, respite uh, uh, based representation. And yeah, and there are some future works for my study and I'm specifically interested in efficient very language mo mo models, like how do we build a cheaper lava during infinite time and more broadly, how, how, how can we influence over the videos very efficiently because we know that vi vi videos are very redundant. Yeah, I think, that's my talk. Yeah, I think the talk is uh, very dense due 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 to the time duration limit. But I'm happy to take yeah. any uh, questions. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I think it's very super super comprehensive uh, delivery that that you did there. Uh, but but all I think all the three works are very significant in their own terms, and uh, especially like Lijo last boy because uh, yeah, video reasoning is kind of what we at Troll Lab is is focusing a lot on. So it's just going to be very excited to see um, future academic work that, um, yeah, uh, attempt to bring, you know, efficient lava into the, the video context. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Perfect. Let's see. There's, um, a com there's a comment on the chat. Do you want to address that? Yeah, yeah. I can read and reply uh, to that the, the comment. So, uh, Yung Bong uh, says that I think there is a drawback in using clip encoder due to the li the limitation in input size. I'm curious about your thoughts on this issue and how it might be resolved. This is important because in vision tasks, the size of the image resolution tends to be seem significantly affect the performance. Yeah, you are one hundred percent correct. <laughs> and uh, so for simple tasks like classification, the resolution may not be a problem. But for dense prediction tasks like segmentation and, and detection, if you have 200 or 300 resolution each side, then you will be much worse than your competitors. And there are some works that try to handle this. And so you can uh, uh, you, you can have a look at the recent Lava uh, updates. It, it's called Lava Next or Lava 1.6, where they divide the big image in, into some grids. For, a, for example, they divide the uh, image into two by two grids, resulting in 336 by 336 resolution, which can enhance the performance. So definitely, I think, yeah, uh, yes, enlarged resolution will Bring improvements. There, there is no doubt. And it, and, and if you can train a model with higher resolution, then go for it. Yeah, don't go with a smaller red resolution. High resolution is always better. Yeah. Yeah, but I think the downside of high, 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 high resolution is that you need more training and inference cost. Then you 
Now, if you are doing a business, you may think about the trade off be, be, between it. Yeah. Great question. Yeah. Uh, um, Is there I have any a other question? Uh, can yeah, I ask sure. by the just speaking? Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have a question regarding your second work. So you, you tackle the counterfactual uh, problem. Uh, it seems like a hallucination problem uh, caused by the, the LMM model. But uh, as you mentioned, the, according to the, the Laban Next, it mentions that if you size up the, the image size, like they, I think they use uh, several aspect ratios of the, the grid uh, mm, yeah. image format. And they mentioned that yeah, right. by using those techniques, they can uh, reduce the, the, the object hallucination problems, like mm -hmm. uh, which is the, actually the task similar to your presented work. So, yeah, 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 like, I, I, uh. Mm. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I understand your question. Your question is that such uh, the lack of composition really is coming from the resolution, or it can also, uh, or it can, comes uh, from the lack of understanding capability itself. So, my answer yeah, yeah, is yeah. both. Yeah, my my answer is both. Uh, can uh, affect why? Because in my case, like, uh, for pre trained model and my fine tuned model, the resolution is always the same. Like previously, it's 336. Uh, and after my fine tune, it's also 336. And we can, uh, we, we can improve a, a, a lot. Here is actually a kind of ablation study. We don't change the resolution, but with more data, our model can perform better. And secondly, I think uh, if you have enough resources, high resolution will bring further performance. Why? Because for some tasks, the for some tasks, the task the model need to understand the small regions, like the small regions really need high resolution. So I think mm -hmm. both is important, and I think it's wrong to say that oh, only high resolution matters or only like the lack of capability matters. Yeah, I I I think both. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your question, and I have a question that uh, so you actually fine tune the the clip or the lava model, right? Then isn't yes, that, right. is there a trade-off between the losing the generalization, generalization capability between like the existing benchmark uh, performances drop? Uh, great, great question. Actually, we did this experiment and, and, and the, the short answer is uh, no. We didn't show, see the performance drop. Uh, where oh. is the table? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here is the Coco re retrieval table. The the table be below, and we show the clip and we we with our finding. Yeah, I I I think roughly the performance is the same, and I can uh, tell you that uh, right now people realize that the key to maintain the performance is do the data mixture. Yeah, I I don't know whether you heard about data mi mixer, but it's very simple. Like, if I have some new data, like my counterfactual data, and I have some pre previous fine tuning data, like Lava one point five data or layout mm. data, I just mi mix them by some ratio, and the the model can maintain the uh, reasonable performance while gaining new capabilities. So with this. Strategy: The performance on a regional task can actually be me be maintained because it's also fine tuned on its original data, data as part of the uh, fine tuning data. Uh, but mm -hmm. but we 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 uh, surprisingly we also found that even without this mixer uh, strategy, we can maintain the performance. And I believe the reason is, is that for our counterfactual data, we actually have both. Uh, real images and synthetic in images like here, we we have both po po positive image and positive caption where they are they are the the, the true natural in images and captions. But we also have such uh, negative data. So like the fine tuning, the counterfactual fine tuning data itself is already a mixture between the real data and fake data. So yeah, I think this part partially explains why we maintain the performance. But like if you want to do a, a, a research project around this, I recommend you to do the data mixture, which will 
definitely stabilize performance on original task. Yeah, great question. Uh, yeah, I see. So you you mean that uh, when we find, so basically we start from the pre-trained lava weight, right? And then we further fine tune it with the additional uh, data set, like using the mixture of uh, the data. Or yeah, yeah, like just, uh, when yeah. you want, mm -hmm. yeah, go mm -hmm. ahead. Uh, so, so uh, are we using the like LoRa or some uh, like LoRa to fine tune with the new uh, mm -hmm. data set? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I think from my experience, if you have a large amount of data, like if your data is larger than 20,000, then fine tuning and LoRa, I think it, it's the equivalent. You can choose whatever you want. But if your data is several thousand or even several hundred, I think LoRa is better because LoRa is especially helpful for such small scale uh, data set. Yeah, for my counter curate paper, I do the full fine tuning and uh, as you can see, it doesn't affect the, the performance because my data is at least uh, uh, 10,000 or 20,000 scale. Yeah. Mm, yeah, thank you. Yeah, great question. Awesome. Any any other question from, from the audience? I know it's, it's very engaged. Yeah, I'm curious, Mars, do you have any comment on on, on uh, new presentation? Because I think you refer a lot of some of the work that that you present on on like you know. Uh, no, I I just want to say that was really like inspiring talk. Yeah, I mean this has done like everything that I imagined as a future work for for my work. Yeah, so well, wow. I learned a lot. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your your comments. Great. Yeah, I uh, yeah I I do think that's multimodal. Uh, it is the future. Yeah, I don't believe that like if it, people can still work on uh, even that classification or code detection problem. Yeah, I I I I think multimodality actually it's not a bad a bad thing. It can give you additional ben benefit on, on understanding things. Yeah, and I think there is more opportunity of transforming. Uh, the, the academic paper to product. Yeah, I think we are one more step closer. Yep. Uh, sorry, but I have a, just one short question. Uh, yeah, is it okay? Yep, go ahead. So I also working on the, the uh, LLM project, but I have a question. Uh, can I have some tips that you also uh, make the questions, the QA templates for this task, right? So, uh, yeah, you mean here, right, for reasoning task? Yeah, yeah. So is there uh, any yeah, tips yeah. that we can, like, because we don't know uh, whether these QA sets are uh, suitable for the, like, training and oh. inference, but how can we get those quality? Okay, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think the answer is very straightforward. In Lava 1.5 training data, they have such more, more, more they have such multi-choice question answer format. So what you can do is that you download the Lava 1.5 JSON training data and you can sample some some questions and within one minute you will find that they have some uh, multi-choice question answer format and you just uh, mimic their uh, data curation style. And this is the safest way to uh, stabilize okay. your training. Yeah, okay. they, they, because they I, have this, yeah. this format, yeah. Because I want to make new new QA sets for the, the new task I propose, but I don't know, is there any like good process? So yeah, thank you for your suggestion. Yeah, you're welcome. Great. Um, will, will you be presenting some of this work at like any upcoming academic conferences? Like yeah, I, yeah, mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah, I will definitely go to Seattle for the uh, CVPR and uh, yeah, uh, so the second work, uh, yeah, the first second work it may appear in some NLP con conference, but I can't go, yeah, but 
for for first version, uh, for for first world, I, I will definitely go to Seattle for Seattle. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I think I think a lot of them, a couple of folks from our team will be there as well. So uh, yeah. good luck to connect and you know discuss. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Yeah, I think we ten minutes over time, but uh, yeah, I really really appreciate both speakers for sharing their work and uh, thanks to the audience for a bunch of good questions and the engagement. Uh, the recording of this session will be available on YouTube within about two three weeks and uh, enjoy and I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye guys. Thank you.